I'd like to uh, introduce you to an old school friend of mine uh, called Tony Davis. Um, we have uh, our memories of each other at school were both as non-Christians. My memories of Tony were um, of a uh, sincere, hardworking, quite serious, football-loving, funny guy. And um, his memories of me are probably um, of a somewhat irresponsible, uh, not hard-working bad boy. But by God's grace, uh, Jesus got hold of both our lives and we've stayed very good friends since then. It's one of those relationships where we seem to have been on parallel lines on our journey and we, we talk not many, uh, uh, sometimes years uh, between our interactions, um, but we always have a very good time and just seem to connect straight away. So it was about uh, 10 days ago, I think, that uh, Tony called me. I was delivering the Grabber Prize uh, to um, a local family. And uh, we got chatting about the Sunday morning meetings, uh, lockdown, and uh, George Muller, as it happened. Tony, uh, since he left school, um, uh, worked for about 30 years for KPMG, an accountancy uh, management consultancy firm, and uh, was a partner there. And uh, a few years ago, he retired. Uh, all the way through, he had been an elder, uh, a church leader, and uh, he still is of a congregation in Bristol. And so we had lots to talk about. Um, but after that, Tony got back in touch and said, did I know that 10 years ago he had been made a trustee of the George Muller Foundation? So this was amazing. Joe and I had a chat with uh, uh, him and Joy, his wife, um, and Tony agreed that he would uh, do a little interview for us. And so here we are today, Tony Davis uh, talking about George Muller. Well, Tony, it's very nice to uh, have you here this morning, and thank you so much for agreeing to uh, have us interview you. Um, I've got a few questions for you. Um, first of all, Tony, what uh, role do you actually have um, at the George Muller Foundation? Yeah, it's great to see you, Nick. So, the George Muller Foundation is a charity with trustees. Uh, I am one of the eight trustees, and I have particular responsibility for the finances, the investments, the, the legal side of the trust. Okay. Um, one question that we were interested in was after George Muller died, and uh, today we've uh, heard about George Muller's funeral, um, what happened to the work? Yeah, it's a really good question, and I'm pleased to say the work carried on as um, very much along the lines that George Muller laid the foundation off. Um, as Joe has so beautifully explained, uh, George and his second wife, Susanna, went on a kind of world tour, uh, a fantastic preaching tour for about 20 years. And, and, and during that period of time, uh, his son-in-law, James Wright, and his daughter, Lydia, effectively took over the work. Uh, but they were so steeped in the ways of faith and prayer, the work carried on uh, while Muller was away, although Muller always retained the title of director and it wasn't until he died that um, that James took that on. J James didn't live a long time after to George but he very wonderfully introduced uh, another uh, person, uh, Fred Bergen, in, in, into the work and that's a lovely story because uh, he was a brethren man as well, steeped in the word of God and in prayer and faith. And uh, as he was praying about it, uh, Fred felt he should go to James and offer his services. Uh, James, at the same time, felt he should go to Fred and see if he'd join him. Um, and that's the way God works, isn't it? And, and mm. so they two began to work together. Uh, so it was logical that when James died, James Wright died, um, Fred Bergen took on the work in the same principles and the same ways uh, of praying and seeing God answer prayer. Uh, and James was, so, sorry, Fred rather, was joined by his son, William Bergen. So when Fred died, actually, William took on the work. So the joyful thing is that uh, the same principles of the work of faith and prayer carried on for a, a number of generations, really. Um, and so it was handed on from one to the other, this, this baton of 
doing something for the glory of God, doing it, uh, presenting it, every need and every petition to the Father. And that principle has uh, been carried on, if you like, down the generations, even to today, that prayer is at the heart of, of the George Muller charity. Mm. Well, one question that we're interested in, Tony, um, is that when um, uh, fostering changed and um, uh, fostering happened more in small groups and then uh, in families, um, that must have had quite big repercussions for these great big uh, orphan houses. Yeah. People today look at the orphan houses, uh, which, is, which, which are really huge buildings, by the way, and, and I'd love it if you ever came to Bristol to have the chance to show you, uh, as well as our museum. Um, but they are daunting houses, and you think, well, that's no, nowhere to, to look after children. And, and so, although it was fit for purpose in its day, come the end of... Um, the Second World War in the early 50s, it, it was time to move them on and, and buy these smaller houses. And uh, those five significant houses were sold to uh, Bristol City Council and they're used for educational purposes. Um, Bristol City College there and is still there in, 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 in uh, two of the houses. Mm. Uh, in, in recent history, um, some of the other big houses have been sold off for, 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 for luxury apartments, really nice, nice places to, to live uh, on the outskirts of, of Bristol. And uh, just a couple of years ago, we um, had a stirring because the, the charity got in one of the large orphanages houses that, um, that were bought uh, when they moved out. And we just had this stirring that we should be back where, where this work really started. Uh, and we were able to buy two of the units. And, and last year we moved back there, opened a really interesting um, museum suitable for, for all generations to come. Mm. And, and so we're back there. We're, we're back in the original site. So when people come and visit us, they can not only see some of the story of Muller and, 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 and the miracles, but they can actually walk around and see these very significant buildings. Mm. And that's something you've been involved in, Tony. Yeah, I, I was... <laughs> really the, the the trustee responsible for the sort of the properties and the finances and uh when this was mentioned one of our staff actually had the kind of vision really for it and and um i don't know about you but you know when something's of the lord and and when she mentioned it um i have to be honest my first reaction was oh no because i knew that if this was god that um this would be happening if, if we were open and obedient to him. But I also knew that probably meant that I was involved in quite a lot of um, activity and work to make it happen. But, but by God's grace, uh, other people helped and, 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 and took at the lion's share of designing where we should go. But um, mm. it was amazing how that came about. It was, that was a, a, a small miracle in itself, how mm. we were able to buy that site because I had no idea how to go about fulfilling this vision of moving back there and and we prayed about it and God opened the door in a, in a really remarkable way. Mm. So what does the uh, foundation do now, Tony? How, how does the work continue? Yes, as you've been doing and, and I've been really impressed with what Joe's done, it, um, George Moore is known for looking after uh, children. Um, such a such a legacy, such a story that's that's known around the world. But he did do a number of other things and significantly before he began the children's work he was supporting missionaries and, and ministries around the world um, really not just sending them money but praying with them encouraging them and and that work has continued and and um e even today um you know over one 1 1.3 1 1.4 million pounds goes to support uh, missions and missionaries around the world and, and a lot of prayer support goes into that so, so most of that comes from people making donations but significant amount of that comes from uh, our own resources so that's a significant piece that's still known as sky the scriptural scriptural knowledge institute mm -hmm. so alongside supporting the the, the ministries um, this story of george muller what we call the heritage inspiring faith is really an important part of the work this story has the capability to inspire people to do great things even today. Mm. Uh, the number of works around the world called uh, George Muller Orphanage or George Muller Institute is, is, is remarkable. Mm. Uh, and people hear the story and said, if God can answer George Muller's prayers, he can answer my prayers. And, and uh, 
So just keeping that story alive is uh, is a significant part mm. of, of what we do. So when we went back into uh, the Ashley Down Orphanage site, and, and and it was a two two units, which was one of the schoolrooms, um, we designed a, a really sort of hands on museum telling the story to this generation, uh, and and particularly so that school children can come and uh, and make that part of their their curriculum. Mm. So um, it's this inspiring the faith, uh, the legacy. And just, I don't know if it's come across, but you'll be aware George Muller was meticulous, wasn't he, and recording everything. And um, every orphan that came in to the orphanages right from the way back, is, there's a little record, and some of them in George Muller's own hand, um, where they came from, their parents, the birth certificates, the marriage certificates, death certificates, uh, and so we have an outstanding sort of archive of, 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 of orphan records going for literally 170 years now. Mm. And, and people come and look at those. So keeping the heritage alive, keeping the story alive, um, inspiring faith is the second key thing. And the, the third key thing is is also what George Muller had such a heart for, was strengthening the local church. Uh, he was, as well as everything else he did, a church pastor. He saw significant church growth. Um, when he came to Bristol and his first time of breaking bread, there was only seven people that broke bread together. And, and, and yet they saw church growth significantly uh, and four congregations and, and um, many thousands of people come into faith. So strengthening churches is, is a key part of what we do through a practical theology course we run, which we run for free. Everything Mullis does is, is obviously for free. So people from local churches can send people along to to that equip events we do how to equip the church in um, maybe looking after uh, caring for ministering for older people or how to use technology uh, effectively in church and, and things like that and we support youth work as well uh, across mm. the city so quite a range of things and even though it's known so much for the for the children's work uh, Muller through his leaflets through his Sunday schools through so many different ways uh, his ministry was uh, to the glory of God. Mm.